How's it going? Welcome back to another great video with the Majestic Host, the Savior. Yes, that's right. And today we're going to be taking a look at quite an interesting game. It's a double A game, so you know it's actually going to have some original creative ideas. Unlike the triple, I mean quadruple A space, like Skull and Bones. Yes, oh, where it has such interesting mechanics in which you can buy lots of cosmetics for your for your for your ship because your ship needs cosmetics and it has stamina what is this lightning meter i think it's stamina my boat has stamina <laughs> oh you have to put the sail away to recover stamina so today we're going to be taking a look at outcast a new beginning okay and yes this is a new beginning because if you don't know anything about the outcast series it's not exactly a series but if you don't know anything about what this game is and where it came from well you know that's no surprise to be honest because this is based on a very old game and the fact that n only now we're getting like a proper sequel to this game not a remake or a remaster or anything like that it's pretty crazy because the original game came out in 1999, okay? I was only two years old when the first Outcast game came out. So it's pretty crazy that we're actually here now in 2024 and we're getting a new game from something, you know, that was as old as this. Yes, I'm very old now. But this game is looking pretty unique. Now, I am basing this review on the early hands-on that I could play with this game. Um, this was provided and it's not just the demo, although I am showing you demo footage here. You can go and try this out yourself as well to give you a good idea of what this game is going to be like. And I have to say, I'm impressed, but also a little bit, you know, like, kind of in the middle with this one. Because I think this is a good game, and it's refreshing because it does open world gameplay differently compared to other open world AAA games and there are a lot of things I do like about this and some things that I don't. And of course you can't expect AA games to have the same polish as AAA. The thing that makes these games much more interesting to me and why they're going to be bigger uh, you know, going forward in the gaming industry, I believe, is because they actually take creative risks. They're actually made by real gamers who aren't just, you know, looking at how to make the most profit. It's not made by a mega corporation where they don't share the same vision and they're just thinking about how they can make this, you know, marketable and easy for everyone to play. Basically just making it a glorified movie at this point. That's what AAA games have become. No, this is gameplay first and it's made by actual gamers who aren't trying just to create something in which they can sell you a bunch of shit. So before we get into this Outcast A New Beginning review, I do humbly ask that you do consider subscribing. It would mean absolutely everything to me. I work so hard on my videos and I'm trying to up the quality each and every time. We're getting so close to 10,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. I'm so passionate about this community. And if you like philosophical videos and video game content, then I combine the two and that is what my channel is about. So become a wise one, join this fantastic community. You will not be disappointed. We take a look at older games and new games. So do consider subscribing, check out the video essays. I'm all about trying to bring back old school YouTube. I'm not here to try and sell you a bunch of BS and consider supporting me by dropping a small thanks or a small donation. That's how I can keep doing this as an independent creator. That really does mean the world to me. So now let's take a look at Outcast, a new beginning, and let's see if this truly is a new beginning. And I do think it is important to support AA games because that is where creativity comes from. Not only consuming things from big companies and corporations, which give you very basic experiences and that are usually rather one dimensional. The first positive is the world itself. This really drew my attention in. And I don't mean just because it's graphically pleasing, because I do think, yes, it does look nice, but that isn't what makes a good game a good game. And at times, it's not that pretty to look at. It can be, but at times it doesn't. Like, the water effects in this are simply amazing. The detail is here, but at times it doesn't look that great. But just the world in general was really interesting to me, because this is an open world, open world game, okay? And what I mean by that, it's exactly the Todd Howard meme. You can actually climb that mountain, you can actually scale this building. The traversal in this game is off the walls and it makes the world feel big 
and tiny at the same time. Because you have this jetpack and wingsuit, you can traverse this world much faster compared to something like Zelda Breath of the Wild or something like that. And it really does make the world feel massive at times and it puts everything into perspective. And I think they did a good job of hiding interesting locations and little areas for you to explore in between the main missions and stuff like that. And to me, that's where I got the most sense of enjoyment with this game. Going underwater, finding interesting things, you know, climbing up to the top of the mountain and finding an interesting location or some enemies to take out, stuff like that. The next positive here is the dialogue, okay? So this isn't going to win awards or anything like that, but I do feel like they did a pretty good job with the dialogue. The character that you play as, Cutter, is actually quite refreshing as a protagonist because unlike a lot of, you know, uh, coming of age stories or, you know, becoming a hero story or something like that. Cutter is more of a kind of military man who likes to get shit done and hasn't got time for BS, which makes it kind of interesting and refreshing. You do really feel like you're playing as a character here, not just, you know, emulating your own personality onto a blank slate. You know, kind of like Geralt uh, in The Witcher series, something like that kind of reminds me of and yeah I do like it. The dialogue here is pretty interesting at times you can ask different questions and your consequences actually matter. One thing I will say about Outcast A New Beginning is at times even if the dialogue is okay uh, which I do like like I said with the character of Cutter and stuff like that but the writing itself can at times be pretty bad I've got to be honest. Um, they try and force in a lot of just jokes that don't work a lot of the NPCs don't feel fleshed out, like when you go into a village and you talk to the chief or something like that. Um, it just feels very one note, very one dimensional. They even often use, uh, reuse dialogue, which just makes it feel even more kind of cheap. And the, like I said, it just doesn't feel like it's a lived in place because the NPCs just kind of jumble around together looking lost. Uh, so the AI isn't the greatest. Um, so I think people do need to be prepared, but yes, the world itself, exploring it, is fun, you know, at times it can even be relaxing just going around on your jetpack and kind of gliding through it all. It's also pretty cool that it makes you really immerse in the world because when you're speaking to alien creatures, they will actually use their own language at times and you have to figure out what they're saying in like the glossary and stuff like that. So. I really do like that. It's, you know, small attentions to detail that make this feel like you are in an alien environment and you're talking to a different species and stuff like that. So now for some negatives. First of all, the UI does feel very indie, okay, at the moment. And uh, it's a little bit cluttered and all over the place and it can feel a little bit handholdy at times. Um, luckily, you don't have to use all of the UI. Flying around just looks off at times and especially using the wingsuit or dodging around. The animations just aren't quite right and it just looks off, but you have to forgive it because AA of course is going to get some jank, but I really do love the exploration in this game, you know. There isn't always lots of things to find or lots of things that are unique, but the fact that you can traverse this world quickly makes the open world feel less boring because you're getting through everything very quickly and like I said you can traverse everything and everything is to scale which is nice. Outcast A New Beginning really does remind me of something that we would have got you know in the early days of the PS3 or Xbox 360 uh, lifetime and I mean that as a positive because it's trying to do something creative, it's trying to do something unique, it's giving you a massive open environment, it's got a slightly, it's got a pretty interesting story I would say so far, um, although I haven't got that far into it of course, but so far it seems quite interesting. The variation doesn't seem to be quite there yet, but perhaps, you know, that comes more as you explore. So now let's quickly talk about the combat in this game. And when you're shooting stuff, it doesn't always have a lot of weight to it, a lot of impact behind it, but it's perfectly serviceable. And the good thing about the weapons in this game is the fact that you can customize it and modify it a lot. And actually I was surprised at how much customization there is in this game because I thought this was going to be a more narrative adventure exploration game, but actually they did put a lot of resources and skills into the combat and it is quite satisfying finding new weapons, upgrading them and stuff like that. So the big one big positive I have to give it is the fact that the ecosystem in this world feels pretty organic and alive. You know, there's lots of different creatures around uh, just going about their business and stuff like that. And the world space truly does feel much more interesting compared to a lot of big open world games. Some of the missions that you do find are quite interesting. 
and I just like how it all feels very seamless and interconnected. The world space itself, when you go into these big cities, is also completely seamless, and this is where you talk to characters and get different missions and stuff like that. Um, some of them are just kind of fetch quests, but some of them actually are pretty interesting, like you have to go out and clear out a settlement and stuff like that. At the same time, it can feel a little bit lifeless, like you do realize like these are just kind of lifeless NPCs, they are just kind of background characters. It doesn't really convince you that they're going about their day doing their own things, stuff like that. It is a little bit janky in that regard, the AI and stuff like that. And I have noticed a few bugs like where you clip out of the map completely and you're underneath the map. So this is very much a double A game, not to the same polish as something like Banishers, Ghost of Eden or something like that. But traversing this world is where the fun is at, you know, going around in the open world, um, just enjoying the kind of lush environments. It can be a relaxing game uh, where you just kind of switch off your brain. Uh, the story isn't too involved from what I've seen so far. And the open world activities, you know, they range from like puzzles, collecting resources, finding little puzzles to solve, combat encounters, but they all feel very much like, okay, here's the objective, you go here to do a side activity and to wipe out a bunch of enemies, or you go here to clear out an outpost, very generic stuff. So it does make the exploration feel a little bit boring if you're planning to go exactly to this location. But if you're just out there and you're exploring, uh, it doesn't get that boring, um, especially when you've got you know main missions to go after. It's got a lot of jank in it. It's got a lot of bugs so far that I've seen. Uh, not anything completely game breaking, but it is very janky at times. And if you like games where you're exploring a different world, then Outcast A New Beginning might be for you. But from all the positives and the negatives, I would say wait for a sale and uh, then maybe consider this because even though it's not full price, I don't think it's uh, polished enough at this point to be worthy. But maybe if you really love the old game, then this will check a lot of boxes. But it just doesn't feel as polished as it could have been. And the story and the writing just isn't there quite yet, I believe. But the world itself is fun to explore and the combat is decent enough. So that is my quick Outcast A New Beginning review. Is Outcast A New Beginning worth it? Well, I'll leave that up to you, but those are my positives and negatives. Like I say, it's always a subjective experience if you think it's worth it or not. I do think supporting AA games is very important because that's where we get new ideas. It does do some new things here, like the traversal, which is really fun, and it makes for open world gameplay feel much more just enjoyable because you're exploring things at a fast pace and at the same time, it's just fun, you know, just gliding around. That's what we need to see more of. But when it comes to the writing and the side missions, they do feel a little bit uh, just kind of generic at this current time. So that is my review. So that is Outcast A New Beginning review. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Have a great day. Peace out.